Okay. So this January 6th committee, now, January 6th 6th public committee, yeah. hearing the 6th public hearing is over. The held by the committee in its entirety. So they'll stream it again at about 8 o'clock tonight on C-SPAN. So uh, I watched uh, or listened through pretty much the whole thing with, uh, it centered on Miss Hutchinson, but they did have other people um, that they showed clips from in there. Nothing that I saw a reason why they had to spring up with an unplanned, new evidence kind of thing. Now, um, Ms. Hutchinson did mention she's outside a car or something trying to tell Mark Meadows, I guess, about the riot. And the implication there was Trump was still speaking when it happened, it seemed to me. There was also, uh, there's clearly some fog of war involved with the whole thing. Um, Trump had wanted to go to the Capitol, but some people thought he wasn't going to the Capitol. There was some clear confusion about that as well. Um, and one thing that was clear, though, is... Uh, Trump thought if he went to the Capitol that he was going to speak. And to me, that implied pretty clearly if he thought he was going to speak to the people there, that there wasn't going to be a riot at the time, because how do you give a speech to people that are rioting? So obviously uh, they implied, you can watch the whole thing, um, that Trump, that everybody, uh, well, not everybody, several people floated the idea of Trump going to the Capitol and speaking to the people, which implies there was no planned insurrection. There was a section that implied there was less Capitol police there than should have been. That was Nancy Pelosi's responsibility. Um, I also know that earlier Trump had requested National Guard. I would like to know who did not send the National Guard if they thought there would be some violence. I also noticed that they showed a text from Laura Ingraham. I think that's her name. And she mentioned the BLM and Antifa together. Uh, so there was an implication that the uh, pa certain patriots there, like the Proud Boys, would cancel uh, the Antifa and BLM people. So the implicate was there was no implication that would, they were there to violently raid the Capitol at all. So there were quite a few things in that testimony that also Trump, apparently they mentioned him throwing a plate at a wall at some point in there. So, uh, you know, he, he was upset. To me, that said that he clearly believed that the election had been stolen and he was emotional that day. That's pretty obvious. Um, the fact that he wanted to walk to the Capitol implied to me that, and his energy on that day implied that in, even though he's older, that he's still in quite good condition for his age and quite aware of things. Um, so... The time, there was some times given. It looked like uh, at about three o'clock, roughly, maybe, if I remember correctly, that people began uh, pushing Trump to tell people to go peacefully. I do believe he did something at around 417, with the implication there, an hour and 17 minutes. Um, so it, it, I, di I didn't see anything really incriminating. I did see stuff pointing to that Trump sincerely believed the election was stolen. Um, the fact that uh, they're insisting people say the 2020 election is over, and there are even candidates today that are running on what they feel like were failures in 2020. Like we literally have elections right now in 2022 with primaries today, excuse me, 
where people um, feel like our election system was not adequately secure on 2020. So, um, no. Part of the reason that people are not satisfied with that is because videos like this, uh, people have to be concerned that they get censored by uh, LinkedIn, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, um, so that we don't have a dialogue about that stuff. So there's a large group that's literally not satisfied about what happened in 2020 still because there's not been adequate data dialogue. Just because you tell people that the election is over and nothing happened uh, doesn't mean people trust you or believe you. In fact, when you don't allow the other side to speak, I do believe that will make people trust you less if you only give one side. And if the January 6th committee says that they want to make things in the light and that people are withholding the truth, then why don't we see all the hours of footage from the January 6th riot so we can see what happened? But I will say that, one, it definitely wasn't an insurrection if Trump thought he'd be able to go there and speak to people. He wasn't intending on an insurrection. He was thinking of walking over there. The implication was the speech was given before, uh, you know, while the once, you know, he was speaking and the Capitol riot, riot was occurring away from there. Um, and that Trump was emotionally involved, that he was, you know, he felt like the election was taken from him. So he, it seems like he was upset enough that he was very sincere about that. Um, so if somebody sincerely believes the election is stolen, just telling them to cry uncle is not going to change their viewpoint on that. I'll tell you that right now. So you need to give a logical argument and allow both sides in a reasonable debate on the topic. People that are both respected. So that is my hopefully quick review of the, um, the January 6th, 6th public hearing, which they just put on because they had all this new evidence, which it doesn't look like they had. Thank you for listening.